Superstore, currently in its fourth season on NBC, competes in the comedy categories of the Emmys, Globes, and other awards. I'm Matt Noble here with Nico Santos, who last year earned a Critics' Choice Television Award nomination for Best Supporting Actor in a Comedy Series. Nico, did that give you some bragging rights amongst your castmates on the show? <laughs> um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it, it was came out of left field. I was so surprised when, when that happened. Um, I remember uh, that morning I was getting all these text messages telling me, uh, congratulations, congratulations. And I had no idea what they were, they, they were talking about. And then um, somebody finally texted, oh, Crazy Rich Asians is nominated for Best Comedy and Best Ensemble. And I was like, oh, that's what they're, that's what they're, uh, they're congratulating me about. And then finally, uh, somebody, uh, my, my publicist called and was like, you're nominated for, <laughs> for a Best Supporting Actor. And I just ran into the hallway of my apartment screaming and, and my boyfriend thought, either somebody's dead or something really good happened. So thank God that it was the, the latter. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. Um, so you play Matteo on the series and at a time like when immigration is such a polarizing issue in the country and in the world, to be honest, mm -hmm. um, you, you play an undocumented worker on a network uh, show Um how like how how have you found the response to that? The response has been overwhelmingly positive, and um, you know I, I keep getting stopped on the street from fans who uh, are either undocumented themselves or have family members who are undocumented, um, who are just sort of like thankful for a, a different portrayal of um, of what an undocumented person looks like, you know, 99% um, of the time when we discuss sort of uh, immigration and undocumented uh, immigrants uh, in this country and, and sort of in the media, the story that's being told is sort of the border crossers from, you know, uh, from the South. And um, and there is such a, 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 a wide variety of, of what it means to be undocumented and to, to be an immigrant. Um, and and Mateo's just like, but a small, uh, part of that, and and, and a, a small part of a story that that rarely gets told. So, um, being Filipino, I'm I, I'm an immigrant myself. I was born and raised in the Philippines. Came to this country when I was 16. I myself have, uh, you know, <laughs> my my own parents were undocumented at 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 one point in their lives. Um, so, uh, every Filipino out there knows somebody who is who is undocumented. Um, so I was just really happy uh, to get the opportunity to be able to to portray the story because it's it's something that uh, the Filipino community is familiar with, um, and it's a story that doesn't get to be told uh, that often. Mm. How do you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, like, um, how do you think the show sort of handled that storyline as well? Yeah, it's been um, it's it's just it's been an incredible uh, journey for Mateo's character. You know, when when he first started on the show, um, he was kind of just this. Uh, kind of snarky, you know, snarky, sassy employee. And um, uh, when when the showrunner um, uh, came to me and told me that uh, we were thinking about uh, turning Mateo's uh, character undocumented, I just thought it was it was such a brilliant, brilliant decision, um, which really it just informs everything about Mateo, why he's so hyper competitive, why he is the way he is. Like it's, 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 it's the, another layer of the story in, in his story that really uh, in, informs his character. So he, it, he becomes more than just this two dimensional, you know, sassy employee. <laughs> yeah. And I guess with this character, you're not undocumented, but you do share a culture with the character. You share a sexual orientation with the character. Uh, yeah. What, like how, uh, how much of yourself do you bring to this role? I, I, I would say I bring a lot of myself uh, to this role. It's been such an amazing experience to, to portray a character so close to my identity. Um, when I first started in this industry, you know, I thought I would have to downplay uh, my Asianness and my queerness. You know, um, a lot of actors, you know, like in the '80s and the '90s, had to stay closeted, and I always sort of took that as a cue that. If I were to go into the entertainment industry, that's probably what I'm going to have to do to to gain a successful career. Um, I'm not particularly a person who sort of 
<laughs> can hide my queerness. I'm pretty obviously gay, I think. Um, and so the fact that I uh, have a, a, a full and success, successful career where like all parts of my identity is, is not just um, portrayed but celebrated has been such a blessing for me. It's, uh, I never thought in a million years that I would be continually playing parts that are both queer and Asian that are complex and that are like, you know, not just sort of like the butt of the joke, but they're, they're, they're real people, you know, like uh, Mateo from Superstore is a real person. Like I, I, I hear so many times that I work with a person exactly like Mateo, or I know exactly who that person is. Um, I, I had the chance to play Oliver in Crazy Rich Asians and who in itself is such a different queer Asian character. Um, so I'm just I'm just really thankful to to get the opportunity to play those parts because those parts you know the intersectionality of my identities and and and, and being able to portray characters that that contain all those uh, don't come often. So how how are you um how are you personality particularly personality wise different from Mateo the most? Oh, I'm a lot nicer than Mateo. I'd like to say. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I've always said uh, in, in many interviews that um, I kind of modeled Mateo after all the shady queens I worked with in retail, because I, I do have a, you know, I used to work retail in San Francisco for a very long time. And, and let me tell you, the competition is fierce, it is tough, and there are sharks on the sales floor, and that's kind of who I, I modeled um, Mateo after. Like, oh God, those were some rough years. <laughs> Oh man, and um, do, do you have um, any anything um, from your experience on the sales floor that you've brought to that to that character from your own interactions with customers and things like that? Well, you know, I worked in high end retail, and uh, and then working on this show, Superstore. Like, I've just come to realize it really doesn't matter, you know, like what you're selling or what level. Of, of retail you're at, um, the, the level of crazy that comes with the customer is exactly the same, whether they're spending 99 cents on toilet paper or $10,000 on a handbag. It is the same crazy cast of characters that walk through the store um, with the crazy demands and, <laughs> you know, just like quirky people. Um, and so I'm, I'm glad that all those years in retail, I'm, I'm finally able to put to use all the experience. Mm. What do you love most about Mateo? Um, I love that he's sort of just uh, unapologetically himself, um, that he will stop at nothing to sort of uh, try and get his way. I mean, like Mateo is, is, is in many ways um, the, the embodiment of like an everyday America. He, he came to this country um, and he's trying to get a better life. Uh, he has sort of different circumstances than everybody else. so. You know, but but that is, you know, I mean, not to sound like super cheesy, but that is the beauty of, of, of America and this country is that, you know, anybody who comes here and, and works hard enough can have a piece of that uh, the American dream. I mean, I'm living proof of that. I, I, I came here as a 16 year old, like sort of like not knowing where my life was going to was going to end up. And, um, you know, uh, yeah, it's it's been a crazy, crazy journey. Yeah. On that journey um, from a sixteen-year-old to now in Superstore, uh, what have, what have you learnt uh, the most? Um, what have I learned the most? Um, honestly, to just sort of like, just not sort of like, just keep on going, not give up. There's, I mean, it's it's a very hard, it's been a hard and long road in getting here. Um, and there have been a thousand million times that I've wanted to quit. Um, but I, I think it was just like, I, I just, I couldn't picture myself doing anything else. So I was just like, well, this is, it's either this or going back to selling handbags. So I just, you know, I think in, in this town, perseverance uh, gets you a long way. Mm. What What's the biggest challenge you've had on Superstore in, in um, yeah. It, uh, the, the biggest challenge, um, you know, when I first started, you know, my, my background's in stand-up comedy. So um, I'm used to sort of like um, 
writing my material and, 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 and testing them out and, and shaping the joke and then presenting it and making sure that the joke is now ready and prepared. Um, but we do a lot of uh, improvising on Superstore mm -hmm. and, and I work with some of the best improvisers uh, that have ever lived. I mean, Mark McKinney is a comedy legend and Lauren Ash and, and Colton Dunn and the, they're both inc incredible improvisers. Um, and so sort of like uh, having to sort of uh, rise up and meet those those incredible talents. Uh, the first couple of seasons was uh, was quite a quite a challenge. Um, and um, you know, and we've, we've done certain episodes where where uh, it's it's a little more heavy on the drama than it is in a comedy. And so I was like, oh, I've I've actually got to act in this. <laughs> I got to talk about making yeah. making me ha ha's. Um, so that was a that was sort of a a, a challenge as well. But um, I, I I love doing the show. It's been it's been such a great. Um, I don't know, like the process has been has been so incredible because we do get to do everything uh, in the show and, and 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 we tackle so many different things that um, I feel like I get to stretch my wings and and uh, and do a lot of things. Mm. Is there a line uh, that you've said or that uh, an actor has said in a scene that's been improvised that you get a particular kick out of? Um, on the pilot, I improvised a line where I say, if you don't work hard, baby Jesus will cry. Um, and uh, that I was so <laughs> like, when I, when I, when I saw the, the pilot airing and, and I, saw the, uh, I saw that line made it, I was like, ah, I was so, I was so pleased. I was so happy. Um, cause we did, we did, we did a lot of improvising in the, in the pilot episode and, uh, to sort of like know that the, the showrunners and the, and, and the writers sort of like place their trust on us to sort of, um, shape, uh, what already was a brilliant script, uh, and that they were willing to sort of like include our input into it. Um, really sort of like was, there's a level of trust there that I don't think exists in, in, in other shows and other sets. Um, so I feel very lucky to work with the people that I work with. Mm. I guess like there's a lot of takes and you're throwing a lot of stuff at the wall and you don't know what makes the final cut till you see the episode. Yeah, that's that's always my favorite part about um, watching the show is that, you know, like I tune in every Thursday at eight o'clock, just like the rest of America. And and that's my favorite part is like, you know, I, I, I know how the sausage was made. So I, I kind of just like, want to see like what the final product is and 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 it's interesting to sort of dissect that i'll be sitting in my living room it's like oh oh they used that that take oh well that line didn't make it what happened to that scene <laughs> <laughs> is there a particular line or scene you've been disappointed didn't make the show that you could share with us now oh well i mean like last week's episode um glenn's storyline was that he was preparing for a passion play mm. um, in his church and um the last scene was supposed to be actually you see you you cut to glenn in his church performing in the passion play and then you pan out and you see that it's uh the rest of his uh castmates in the play are children it's a children's play and i thought it was such a funny scene it's such a funny <laughs> image but you know we only got 22 minutes to uh yeah. uh to uh to make an episode so they had they had to cut something yeah. Oh, that's funny. I, I like, because I was expecting that scene watching the episode and then I was like, uh, oh, they must have run out of money for like a, a set. Like the, they didn't want to make the extra set, but no, they did make, They did do a, a shot of it. it and, did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was really funny. So oh, funny. Yeah, I didn't get to see it. Yeah. Sometimes all our episodes are an hour long. It's mm. just a lot. Yeah. Did you, did you have, uh, did, is there a line that you've said that you're upset got cut? Trying to figure out if, if there was, you know, all these, we've done so many episodes yeah. at this point, they all kind of melt together. Um, and I never, I never remember if it's like, was that an improvised line that got cut mm -hmm. or was it a scripted yeah. line? That's fair. Um, yeah. I, I can't remember off the top of my head. It's been so many. <laughs> what has been the funniest scene for you to shoot on the series? The funniest scene to shoot, the funniest scenes to shoot are always the break room scene. Because it's we're all in this in, in in one room together, the entire cast. Um, so the energy is sort of frenetic and, and crazy and and fun. 
Um, you're kind of just hanging out. I, I, I would akin it to like a really crazy family reunion where you're kind of like hanging out with all your like crazy cousins that you love. And, and that's what the energy is. Like everybody's just like in a really great mood. Um, we know that uh, the break room scenes take the longest to film, but um, mm -hmm. I just hunker down and, and get through it together. Um, but it is, it's a lot of fun. And, and towards the end of the day, that's we start going off the rails and just start being delirious and, and improvising silly things. And then a lot of singing happens and, and inappropriate jokes and, and all that. It's, uh, those are the most fun. Mm. Like, uh, like, uh, uh, sorry, Nico. With the uh, with uh, your your role on uh, Crazy Rich Asians, and that whole film was just uh, you know a uh, milestone um, in terms of um, Asians in cinema, and and uh, and your your role in uh, Superstore is also um, sort of groundbreaking in some ways, and we see a uh, real forward uh, movement and momentum in terms of the types of stories that are being told, the types of characters that are being shown in big, uh, successful box office films and network uh, series. What? But there's still also a lot of a way to go. And uh, where would you like to see things head in that regard? Like what, what are the next steps that you can see? I mean, I would, I would like it to be, I, I know that uh, stories about marginalized groups and marginalized people is sort of like what's, what's um, being greenlit right now in Hollywood and it's doing really well. Um, and it's, it's been such a, you know, like watershed moment for, for diversity and, and, and inclusion and the representation. And that's great. But what I would really love to see is sort of um, these different marginalized groups sort of just like being uh, integrated into um, more mainstream projects. So I know that Marvel has announced that they're they're looking for like a, an Asian, uh, a, a gay uh, superhero Asian lead. Um, that's I mean th those are the type of things that I that I'm really interested in seeing. Like I want to see like a super queer action star. <laughs> that's mm -hmm. what I want to see. You know, like something completely out of the norm. Like somebody from 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 who's outside of the box, plugged in to something super mainstream. Like that's that's really what I what I would love to say. Like I'm excited to see. Uh, you know, I know Billy Eichner is 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 going to star in his own romantic comedy, uh, and and that's I'm, I'm excited to see that. Like uh, you know, I think it's it's time for 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 the rest of us to sort of uh, you know get our shot and and be plugged into a. To what to what ninety nine percent of of the market is seeing, yeah, yeah. Well, Nico Santos, thank you so much uh, for talking with us today. Uh, to all your viewers, you can go to goldderby.com right now and make your prediction so you can compete against our experts, editors, and others fans to smooth pr to prove if you're the smartest pro prognosticator in Hollywood. But before you go, click our subscribe button so you can get alerted to other great chats with uh, Hollywood stars. Thanks so much, Nico. Thank you so much. Good no great talking to you. We are.